this new Oregon Trail is bringing me home from Oregon to Missouri. Along the way, I've been exploring history. This video has a nice contrast between a rowdy, romantic, Old West of popular imagination and the real Old West of pioneering struggle. Which story best tells the human adventure? You tell me. I'm at the Buffalo Bill Ranch. It is a overcast Nebraska day, very comfortable. The place looks nice. I think I'm gonna go through his house later. You do have to pay an extra fee to do that. Buffalo Bill was a scout and a frontiersman, but just how real was the ideal of the American West that he was promoting? I'm not sure. There's an awful lot to look at here. His real genius, of course, was as a self-promoter and a showman. an American tradition that is at the heart of what we think of ourselves as Americans. I'm trying to get an idea of who the real Cody was. Is it this guy? Buffalo Bill is a fascinating figure. He reflects who we are as Americans. One thing about us, we reinvent ourselves. And just as important, we celebrate that reinvention. I'm not sure if the, the story of the American West is largely a result of what this guy was trying to promote, and that's how we've come to think of it, or if he was just really good at cashing in on what was just destined to be an American fascination with our own history. I don't know if you can see them, they're a little bit far away, but they do have living buffalo here to look at. I was talking to a nice gentleman who helps take care of things out here. And these two buffalo are relatively new out here. Some of the older ones would be a little more easily enticed over to the fence, but they're a little skittish. This is Cody's cabin that he used when he was doing some ranching. Of course, the cabin was moved here later.
it is a very lovely park-like setting. There are trails around here, but I don't know. I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting the place to be a little more extensive. Maybe I just haven't found all of it yet. The hiking trails really feel more like just service roads to me. Did Buffalo Bill Cody do everything he did just so he could live in this kind of opulence? Or was he an attention junkie? I wonder if he was born today, would he be a YouTuber? This house is full of history. If you're into that kind of a thing, this might be a good place to come. Right behind the main mansion is the cob house. Corn cobs were used to, to heat the mansion, and this is where they were kept. This was also used as a bathhouse. Right behind the cob house is the ice house. This was their refrigerator. Ice would be kept in here on straw. So it would actually last throughout the summer and they could keep, keep food fresh in here. The grounds out here are only a few acres in, in total. So, the, the park as it exists right now is really just a, a pale shadow of what the original ranch would have been. I'm now at the Homestead National Historical Park. I wanted to share a couple more thoughts about that Buffalo Bill Ranch. My first thought is more of a question. Do you think something modern, like a modern spectacle, like the Dolly Parton stampede could hold a candle to what it must have been like to go see one of Buffalo Bill's Wild West shows way back then? My second thought is Buffalo Bill Cody must be having a pretty good time if he knows that these days folks are paying $14 just to park in front of his old house and an extra four bucks to walk through the house. I'm sure he would appreciate that.
here's an idea using goat power to work something like a butter churn. I think we have a new job for Indigo. Look at the construction on this thing. This cabin was one of the original cabins. Our homesteader built this himself. But, I mean, look at this wall. So, a family of 12 lived here. Looks like there is a little upstairs, but can't get through to it. This place is open until dusk. I don't have a whole lot of time, so I will take advantage of some of their hiking trails. They look they look pretty nice here. Beautiful building. The early homesteaders lived in a time of real hard work and real hardship. When confronting such circumstances, we must hold tightly to the certainty that God's grace guides the sacrifices we make for a greater purpose. This place is pretty nice and it's absolutely free. These trails really give you a good sense of what the prairie might have been. Plus it's just a nice walk. Homesteaders to get the free land were expected to improve it. From our perspective today, 
it's hard to imagine pristine prairie land as something that needed to be improved. So this is kind of interesting. The uh, homesteaders' houses were of four different varieties. You've got the log home, you've got the dugout, you've got the Saudi house, and you've got a frame house. A frame house was clearly a sign that you had really made it as a homesteader. It was like, it was like being in a really nice place. This stone from the old state capital at Lincoln, Nebraska, marks the site of the first registered homestead of the United States. Here's the grave site of that first homesteader. This plot is to show what improved prairie land for homesteading would be. From that to that. My own journey has taken me from here to here. The American dream has always been one of faith in a limitless potential. The frontier of the Old West held a promise of that limitless potential. These days, we might redefine our limitless potential in terms of science and technology. I'd like to think in the future, our new limitless potential will incorporate spiritual growth. Living our best lives with introspection and gratitude, finding our bliss, and in that process, leaving our loved ones and land better off as well. back home yet, but I am in Missouri. What have I got planned for tomorrow? You'll just have to wait and see. I thought I'd be able to wrap this journey up in part two, but there's just too much good material. Stay tuned for part three of A New Oregon Trail. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip back to the moon with me.